Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's been a minute. I've been so busy. Uh, it's kind of the last time I did a YouTube video. It's not good. It's awful. I need to be more consistent with my videos. So apologies for such a late video, but I will try to work on that and do more videos for you guys more often than I have. So um, hi to all the student nurses out there who follow my YouTube channel and um, I hope that you guys are doing well with your assignments, with your um, placements and, and that you're not stressing out too much because you will be fine, you'll get through it, we all go through it and we will get through it. So today I'm going to talk about how to manage a deteriorating patient. So, um, you know, the, the thing we all dread, having that really sick patient and how to like manage them in a way that is professional, that is efficient and that will provide the best outcome for your patient. So, say for example, we go into work and we have a patient there, we'll call him John, and he's there and you, have, you do a head to toe assessment. Um, and John looks a bit sleepy this morning, maybe he didn't really sleep that well last night. He doesn't want his breakfast, he's just not up for anything. You do a set of vital signs and you notice that his blood pressure is a bit on the low side. Um, but everything else seems okay. Keep an eye on John, you tell him, listen, just drink more fluids throughout the day, your blood pressure is a bit on the low side, um, and yeah. Then you come back, say, lunchtime. You go into, into his room, you ask him how he is. And this morning he was able to tell you what day of the week it was, but now he doesn't really know what day of the week it is. You ask him where he is and he's slightly bit confused where he is. He doesn't know if he's in hospital or if he's at home. That is enough for you to say, okay, I need to do a set of vital signs and see what's going on. Is John okay? So you do a set of vital signs and you find out, okay, he hasn't really, the blood pressure hasn't improved. He hasn't drunk that much water since. On top of that, it's got a bit of a temperature. His temperature is 38.3. Um, and then his heart rate is a bit on the high side. Say for example, it's 111. And his sats are kind of dropping a bit. So his early warning was maybe a one in the morning and now it's like a five. And this, you should be concerned about it. Um, like as a nurse, you, you, you learn to have this little instinct, like the nursing antenna on that goes ding, 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 something's not right here, you know? Um, even before he start, you realize that he was confused, like just your first like initial assessment in the morning, you just knew that he wasn't himself. So at that case, at lunchtime, you do another set of vital signs. You check his blood pressure and you realize it's the early warning score is high. So you ring the doctor and obviously you want to use a communication tool like ISBAR, um, which stands for Identification, Situation, Background, Assessment and Recommendation. So you tell them, hello, introduce yourself to the doctor, tell them the situation that, you know, John's not feeling too well, it's a bit confused, not drinking that much water. Um, you tell them about his early warning score, tell them about his background, any medical or surgical history that John may have, and your assessment, what you've done, and then your recommendation. So you say, I really want you to review John as soon as you can, um, because I just feel like he's either has some sort of infection or he, he has some sort of infection or there's something there because when you look at a low blood pressure and a high heart rate, that can indicate one or two things. It can indicate a hemorrhage somewhere. There might be bleeding somewhere. Um, if you look at a temperature going up, you think an infection. So where is the source of infection? So many times patients have uh, hospital acquired infections from literally things that they we have inserted. So whether it's a catheter, they might have a urinary catheter in situ, they might have um, IV cannula in situ in their arms, 
or in their hand and they might have a chest strain in situ they might have different things these all make the patient prone to infections so you communicated your concerns um, and information you've given to the doctor you wait for the doctor to come and review John so at that time you want to obviously keep an eye on John um, the doctor comes goes in says okay we'll do the sepsis 6 um, we'll give we'll give fluids because the blood pressure is low we will take flaws you might book John for a chest x-ray so you want to like keep a keep on top of all those things he might want a urinary sample he might want oxygen because he's, if his saturations are coming down he needs a bit small bit of oxygen just to get that going up again and he might take a set of bloods now if you can take bloods as a nurse go ahead it's quicker instead of having to wait for the doctor because he's probably busy trying to book their chest x-ray and you're there kind of going like okay well you know it's better off to be if, if the patient doesn't have an IV cannula go ahead and uh, insert an IV cannula for all the student nurses who are probably like finishing they're maybe you're in your third year or fourth year something you want to like get the ball rolling once you start as a nurse learn how to insert an IV cannula trust me it'll save you time it will save you lots and lots of time learn how to insert an IV cannula and learn how to take bloods it just makes your life as a nurse so much easier so 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 much easier trust me so we've done all of that and then after say 30 minutes or an hour give it an hour if he's not if you see he's not so you know he's not so bad he's getting there do a set of obs in an hour see what it is and because you've like basically notice the pa the problem in advance once you take the vital signs you'll see that his vitals are much improved his blood pressure should be much better and um, slowly going up now if the blood pressure was really low the doctor might just decide to give a bolus so it's just fluids running quick in and um, over like just straight in you know but if it's not that low it might just be in a higher rate uh, per hour uh, so yeah if you've done all of that the, when you check the vitals again the blood pressure should be much better the temperature if you've given paracetamol should come down and you've sent off the urinary sample and bloods have been sent the doctor will have a look at the bloods and he might decide oh, okay so maybe the crp is a bit raised i'll start him on an antibiotic iv antibiotic um, and the doctor will decide whether they want um, an antibiotic like Taz or IV Mentin or Vancomycin, they'll tell you what it is, you'll get it ready. And once we have all the intervention in, John should feel much better. And you might have five other patients that obviously you remember them, don't just get bogged down on the one patient. Of course, when the patient is really sick, you want to put your concentration on them. But at the back of your mind, you know you have five other patients that you have to look after. Um, so by the end of your shift, you're trying to manage your time um, and make sure you've attended to all your patients. And then you wanna just take another set of vital signs um, before you finish your shift. And at the end of your shift, obviously, John's vitals should be better. His early one score might go from a five to like a one and eventually to a zero. Um, and one thing that helps is asking the doctor to rec to to write a plan of how often do you want me to take this patient's vital signs. Now, you can just use the recommendations as per the early warning score. So depending on what the score is, it might want you to take hourly, it might want you to take four hourly. So in that case, the doctor might say, just follow the recommendation of the early warning score, or the doctor might have his own recommendation. He might say, you know what, this patient is sicker than, than the early morning score guy, I want this patient's vitals taken every half an hour and that happens in some cases. Just for a small pre period of time, take the vitals for half an hour until the patient stabilizes. So yeah, um, and what you want to do before you go, obviously, um, you want to inform John's next of kin of what happened because he was your sickest patient that day tell them that saying this happened he was not well and um, we took vital signs and he was not well we gave him antibiotics he's had a chest x-ray 
and the doctor's gonna review the results and he's doing much better today. I just wanted to let you know. Simple as that. And then you finish your shift. And that is the beauty of being a nurse. Just being able to care for your patient and being able to recognize when something is wrong before you even have it like a clinical proof showing you that something is wrong. Um, and therefore like early detection Prevention is better than cure, as they always say, and the sooner you find that your like, patient is not well, the better and you can intervene and help patients get better and save lives. And that's what all the nurses out there do. So that is it. That's a small little video about how to manage your deteriorating patient and how to stay calm. Um, and efficient as well. You want to stay calm, efficient, and be there as a patient advocate and provide psychological support for your patient throughout such a distressing time um, for them when they're very sick. So that is all for today's video. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed. Bye.